Hey guys, it's Joette with balloncoach.com and today we are having an amazing guest speaker, Jeff Kelly of Balloon Suite, talking about a super always hot topic, increased prices for profit. And Jeff has been an instructor at Balloon Boss Summit for years. Um, people love his insights, not only because he's got eight years of experience working with the balloon industry, helping them with their websites and online presence, but he also has a history as a entrepreneur himself, owning several different types of companies. And so he brings a wealth of knowledge um, to all of our training. So I love having him as a speaker online and in person because there's always amazing golden nuggets for us to get. So I am going to stop my share so that Jeff will be able to um, be the main man speaking and, and delivering content for us. And um, if you guys have other questions throughout the presentation, feel free to throw them into the chat box. All right, so Jeff, without further ado, I'm giving it over to you. It's great to see you all today. Um, are you all seeing my screen now that Joette has checked if we can see hers? Yes. Okay, excellent. So I hope you're here to talk about pricing. If you're not here to talk about pricing, that's great. You're in a great place. Let's talk about pricing and then you can ask whatever your questions are that are unrelated at the end. But we're going to talk about this business process of addressing your pricing on a regular basis. Um, the title of this here that you're all staring at with me and that probably baited you in is increasing your prices for profit. Um, I'm gonna explain that connection very clearly, but I just, I want us to all get into that zone where uh, as much as possible, we've put the balloons down in our brain for a moment and we're thinking about our business for a moment because this is a business thing. This is purely a business thing. This is the time of year um, when a couple of my businesses are evaluating prices. Um, I, in, you know, in other, in another business I own, we evaluate prices every six months. And so you're going to hear about pricing and some ways that you might think about it. Why thinking about your prices is important, where to start. If you've never changed your prices in, in kind of a methodical way, why you might want to do it methodically, all this kind of stuff, any of these questions that are coming up in your brain right now, or that you thought of that motivated you to come here, we're going to cover that. Um, you are very welcome to type in chat as we go. Uh, I will do my best to keep track of it and answer your questions along the way. And then if I miss your message uh, as we're going through, then there's definitely some Q&A time as we get to the end and just you know, unmute, speak up, uh, get in my face and make sure I'm answering your questions. So hold on just a second while I go find my chat box. That's always fun how they disappear, right? <laughs> yeah, as soon as you start sharing, the whole Zoom thing changes around and you got to go put it back together. Okay. <laughs> chat ready to go and you are very very welcome i'm a video on kind of guy i expected my kids to be video on uh when they were in zoom school you know during COVID. so you're very welcome to be video on as well um i will not judge backgrounds i will not judge any of that as you can see like if you could see the rest of my room right now there's a construction site in here as we're doing some cabinet work so um so feel very comfortable if you'd like to turn that on and have that interaction so let's talk about increasing prices for profit i'm going to tell you a little bit about me and balloon suite to start, um, my team and I have about eight years in the balloon decor industry doing sales and marketing work. Um, our first client was somebody you may have heard of. His name is Stephen Jones. Uh, and for years before that, we've been doing sales and marketing work with a variety of different types of businesses. I own other businesses as well, as Joette uh, mentioned, and I've owned many over time, including buying and selling them. Uh, as a team at Balloon Suite, we work with hundreds of clients in the balloon decor space. So your businesses are very well known to me and my team. My team has all been hands-on with balloons. We will often hire clients to help us do a Zoom uh, get together of some kind to build a garland or do balloon twisting, which was our most recent one. We're in the United States, we're very hands-on and um, we're very easy to work with. I think those are some of the really positive pieces of feedback uh, that I get from clients. Um, I think that's a little bit about me. Um, I chose to go with a business route this time. Sometimes when I get together and we speak, um, I, I go more of the family route. I did not do that this time, but you can go watch replays and learn more about me on the family side if you're interested in that too. So let's talk about what we're going to learn today. Uh, there's four areas we're going to cover, plus your questions. Uh, number one, why should I increase prices? And, and you'll hear me use the term I in this conversation. Uh, but I want you to I want you to practice replacing the word I with 
why should my business increase prices? So this is just something as owners that I want you to just kind of practice bigger picture. But why should prices go up? Next one, what is a cost model? Yes, if you don't know what a cost model is, you're about to find out. So that's okay. We're peaking curiosity right now. What is a pricing strategy? Okay, so here's another term you may not know, pricing strategy. And then how does my business increase its prices? Now, if when you read that sentence, you read, how do I increase prices? Again, try to activate that easy button and start to practice that. How does my business increase prices? Because one of the reasons you're hearing this from me and we're here talking about pricing and I'm picking on the use of the word I, how do I raise prices? Is because this is a business process. This isn't something you do as a human person. This is something you do as a business. A business raises its prices and a business has a process to evaluate its pricing and change its pricing. So I would like, I'm going to get a little feedback from at least four of you, five of you, because you have your cameras on. If you don't have your cameras on, I'll give you some direction. Uh, if you have access to the raise hand button, I would like you to get ready to be rapid fire on that. Because I'm going to ask a few questions here so that I understand where you are at. Uh, if I get any overwhelming feedback on any of these questions, that will help me tailor what I teach to where you, the, the majority of you are at. So feel free to turn your cameras on so you can like wave and wiggle or get ready to hit that uh, hand up button and then unraise your hand. So my first question is, if you identify with this statement, I want you to wiggle, raise your hand, uh, wh whatever makes sense. So we have a pricing strategy or a pricing worksheet or a process to determine our prices. If that is you, I want you to raise your hand or wiggle or something. Okay. The next one is we have raised our prices in the last 12 to 18 months. Oh, yeah. this, one's, this one's better than I thought. Okay, good. And then the third one here is we have a predetermined process for how we change our prices. Okay, good. That's kind of what I thought. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I, I, think you're, I think you're going to enjoy what we cover here. Let's keep going. Uh, first, I'm going to hit you with some definitions. Um, these are things, a couple of these words you've heard already, but I mean, you may not have ever heard them before this, but you heard them earlier when I said, what are we going to learn? Um, I'm going to hit you with five that you're, you may hear from me uh, here. Number one is price. Oh my gosh, we're talking about pricing and I'm defining price. So the price, when you hear me say the price, it is the retail, I shouldn't have used the word price in the definition, I'm sorry, the retail amount of money someone has to pay for a product or service that you offer. Okay. The reason I defined this clearly as the first term, I mean, clearly except that I used the word price in the definition. Uh, the reason I define this is because I don't want us to get confused when we start saying things like expenses and cost. Those are not price. And I know across this room, you all get that already because you're in mastermind, you've been there, you've done that to an extent, but I just want to be super, super clear. There is a retail amount of money that you charge. And that is different from all of the other numbers that might be associated with a, a product or service. Number two, we're going to talk about a sales lead going salesy and marketingly on you. So a sales lead, uh, let, let me start with a marketing lead. It's a little easier to understand if I start there. A marketing lead is someone who is interacting with your business through some sort of marketing effort. Social media content is marketing. Boosting posts on social media is marketing. Having a website is marketing until it becomes sales. Um, having flyers, those are marketing. Balloon tags are marketing. Uh, going to a, an event, that's marketing. A marketing lead is a person or business interacting with your marketing world. A sales lead, this is, where we, this is what we love in sales. We love sales leads. A sales lead is someone who is engaging you in a conversation with the intent to purchase. So marketing comes first, right? And then sales comes after that. Marketing makes people aware of your business. Sales is how you close a deal and do a job. So a marketing lead is someone you're speaking to in the marketing context. And when I say you, I don't mean you personally as a human. I mean, your business, they are interacting with some sort of marketing you're doing. And a sales lead is someone who is engaged in a sales interaction with you. Okay, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll come back to these terms and you'll, all of a sudden you'll hear me saying these things and you'll be like, oh, okay. Uh, next one we're going to talk about is a cost model. 
I am a bit of a data and science and computer nerd. And so I love my cost models. Cost models are spreadsheets. Cost models are a spreadsheet that helps you determine what the retail price should be. The price, remember, we defined price. And then the, the last one on here is pricing strategy. So there are many different ways you can come to a price for a product or service. There are many, 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 many strategies out there. If you've been on Balloon Suite and you've seen our pricing strategy that we discuss on the Balloon Suite blog post, that is a cost-based pricing strategy. In Balloon Decor, we talk a lot about value-based uh, pricing strategies. You may also hear competitive pricing strategies. We're going to talk about these a little bit more. Okay, so there's some definitions for you. We're going to roll on. If there's anything else you hear me say, and you don't know what those words mean, pop into chat and say, Jeff, what is A? And then just give me that feedback, um, and I will, I will define it for you, okay? Because I know I use some business and sales and marketing terms sometimes that are not common. So the first part of this is going to be a little discussion. And I know discussions are scary. They've been scary since school, but they're actually not, right? I would like to have a little discussion about why you think prices should change. So I know there were a whole bunch of hands and wiggles and things that happened when I said, you've changed. have you changed your pricing in the last 12 to 18 months? Feel free to drop in chat or feel free to unmute and interrupt and just explain a, a one reason why you think prices for products or services should change. I'll go first to help warm the waters. With Balloon Boss Summit, I have to increase the price because the price of staying at the hotel, the food, and every vendor that I work with goes up every single year. Hmm. Okay, some hitting chat because we, we like the impersonal communication now. Inflation, overhead, cost increases, cost of living changes, uh, more votes for inflation. Uh, yep, your expenses on the product, so the balloons go up, personal living expense changes. Yeah, these are all good ones. Um, <laughs> Tabitha, thank you for talking about staff. Um, okay, good. Your skill level. Yep. Okay, good. So, so we're a reasonably educated bunch here when it comes to pricing. Your delivery service area. Yes. Okay. These are all good reasons. Go ahead, Linda. Because I want to increase my profit. Yeah, great. You want to make more. Darn right. All right, right. I do too, right? Like, yeah, of course. If I were in business. Um, I have something. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm off camera because I'm in the car. Um, That's okay. But That's great. I, hi, Karen. Um, hi. Um, some of us are so new that we've been underpricing and don't really yes. know what to charge. And so we need to step up our game. That is Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Good job saying it and declaring it. Yes. Sherry, it looks like you're un unmuted too. So hop in here. I'm not unmuted. Sorry. <laughs> yes, you Am are, I but that's unmuted? okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. There you go. Now you're now I can see that you're muted. Okay. So this the reason I like to start with the discussion is because often in a group of business owners, we all know the answers already. Now we might not know all of the answers. We might not have decided what our personal answers are yet for our business and why prices should change. But as you can hear, there's tons of different reasons for changing your prices. And these are all good reasons. There's one type of reason I will mention here that is hard to quantify. Quantify, okay, Jeff, what does quantify mean? It means make it into numbers or make it into math, right? Measurement, so, there's one in here that's hard to quantify, which is what Sherry just called out, which is I'm worth more. How much more? I don't know. It's hard to make that math. So I just want to point out that there's a lot of things here. A lot of answers that dropped in here are, are easy to measure. We can, we can put numbers on them. You know, my, my, the price of gas, the price of balloons, the price of my rent, the, you know, all these different things, right? These are numbers and we, it went from this number to this number but how much am I worth or what's the quality of our work? That one's hard to measure. What's our customer service? How many five-star Google reviews do we have? These are hard to turn into numbers. You have to basically decide. So there's kind of two, two types of measurements that might change your prices. I just wanna make that really clear. Another thing I wanna call out is the delivery service area comment from Shelly. Thank you, Shelly. Um, delivery fees are totally common and normal in balloon decorating and delivery fees based on 
the distance or difficulty to deliver completely normal. And that's an, we're going to talk about that a little bit. That's a dynamic item in your pricing. So you'll, you, you'll hear a dynamic pricing strategy. That is a dynamic item. How many miles away are you? How many hours will I have to sit in traffic if you're in the Seattle area? You might, you might be five miles away and that might be an hour drive, right? So there is dynamic, dynamic means a variable. Yeah, it's a variable. It's, it's something that would change. So it might be a delivery zone. You know, these are some things that we see it from other businesses that are, that are normal to consider. Delivery zone, are you in the, the zone one, two, three, or four, right? And then they all have different pricing. It could be by miles. Some, some folks like to do it delivery by mile pricing, things like that. I'll just throw out one more as a preview. It could be that Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays are more expensive. So it could be a, a day of the week variable, right? We'll talk more about dynamic pricing, but I just want to hear, I want you to hear that and see that as you're, if you look back through chat and see some of the things that dropped in here, there's some categorization we can give to these, you know, clear, it went from this price to this price, kind of unclear, you know, how much better is my team or me, if I am my team this year compared to last year. And then there's variables that you can stick in now a lot. So sometimes variables are fees. If you want me to strike, I mean, if you want me to stress, you have to pay me a lot of money. I, I don't do balloons. If, if somebody is going to pay you to strike and they need you to be there after 10 p.m., perhaps that costs more. That is a variable fee, right? But it is absolutely something that needs to be in your cost model because it costs you money. Costs you time and treasure. Costs you time on your team. All these things. Okay, well, I'm going to move on from the discussion part. There's a few notes in here, things that I just wrote down. If you go grab what's in chat, you've got a much better list of, of uh, things than me, because I just took a couple minutes and just jotted down the, the exact things that I mentioned. Uh, sorry, one more honorable mention shout out here. I mean, it's not even an honorable mention. The cost of bread and milk and eggs and broccoli and bananas is up like, what, 40 to 50% in the last five years? It's insane. Agreed. But that also should reflect in the cost increase of your labor because your staff is then paying that as well. Okay. So, so this is, this is ex exactly down this thread is where I want to go for a moment, which is talk about inflation. The cost of eggs does not determine the cost of balloon decor, but there are inflationary costs that would impact your pricing. The cost of balloons, the cost of shipping, the cost at right, the cost of the labor, how much do you have to pay? So I want to make this clear because like eggs went through a thing, right? Like they had a life journey in the last couple of years, right? But eggs are not balloon decor. Why did eggs go through that? If we zoom out and think about business, eggs went through that because of supply and demand and inflation in that supply chain and their whole thing. And eggs had their own journey. Are you hearing this? Like, yes, we hear, oh, inflation is X percent, right? Okay, so inflation is Y percent. But I want to make it really clear that that does not mean your business prices are inflating. Okay, we're going really advanced all of a sudden, but I want you to hear something. This, I'm going really, what, meta? Not Facebook meta, but like meta, like big picture on you, like multi-business owner is all of a sudden showing up in the conversation. If you hear inflation has been 10%, and so I am going to increase my prices 10%, you are part of the problem of inflation for everyone. Did you hear that? I just said, don't do that. Now, if you have a cost model and a pricing strategy and you look at that and the answer is my prices need to go up 10%, your prices might be eggs. You might need to go up 20%. I don't know. I want you to do it based on your process and your cost model and your pricing strategy. Because when you as a business owner, oh my gosh, inflation is up 10%, eggs went up 20%. I have to go 20% because eggs are up 20% and you're doing something unrelated to eggs. Holy moly, you are part of the problem in our economy. Okay, I'm going to get off this little high horse, but I just want to talk about inflation a little bit because inflation is a thing that pushes our prices around. The other part of that is deflation. We have markets right now, grocery is one of them where prices are going down year over year. That is called deflation. So prices don't just go up. We just live in a country where the monetary policy pushes the value of the dollar down every year. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going real meta and big on you. But if you're meta and big, I want you to hear that. And if this is going over your head, just, just replay it later when you're ready for this as an owner to, to kind of get into this zone. 
focus on your pro your process, your cost model, your pricing strategy. Let that guide you. That's where your focus should be. Okay. Thank you for letting me go down that tangent. Let's talk about cost models. <coughs> cost models are how you, it's a spreadsheet. I, like the practical way to think about this is a spreadsheet. It is how and where you track your expenses, maybe your competitor's pricing, maybe the value of your education because you've taken the Qualitex pricing thing and it says you look at your the cost of your education and cost of cost. I had I had I don't, I don't know who it was, but somebody was recently like. Jeff, Qualitex just has this great thing. You should just link over to them and they like they answer all the questions and that's, you don't make your own thing. Okay, I mean, like, okay, but there are many different, we're gonna talk about the, those in a moment. Those are, uh, those are pricing strategies. You don't have to price it like that. I don't price balloon suite like that. I don't, I don't use my competitors because honestly, I don't have any in balloon decor and I don't use my personal worth to determine the prices in balloon suite. I have a team, you know, I'm like, we're beyond like it just being my time as an artisan. So this cost model is a spreadsheet where you track the things that go into your pricing, it goes into what the cost to deliver your product or service is. Now I'm going to blow your mind here and I'm going to say each product needs a spreadsheet. Oh my gosh, Jeff, but I could make anything. Yes, I know. Thank you for pointing that out. I know you can. Y'all are artists. Your team are artists. Like you can. Somebody can be like, but yeah, but then I want a swan over here. And you can make that. That's cool. It's very hard to come up with a price model for that because it's a one-off. And yes, literally you could make anything, but I know there's some things you can make a price model on. A column, an arch, an organic arch. You get me? A balloon drop. These are your products. Each of your products, like we talk about this on your website, right? Okay, Jeff, I have this four page website now. What should I do next? I get this question all the time. You should create a product section and have a page for each product. And guess what? If you do that, and we're talking about cost models, each of those products should have a cost model. Now I do this in one big, it's a workbook, right? We use Google, we use the Google stacks. So we're using Google sheets. And then there's a sheet that, you know, in that workbook, there is a sheet for literally every single thing that we sell individually. And Jeff, I don't, you know, they might want a four, you know, they might want a four foot one or they might want a 22 and a half foot one. Like Jeff, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I know. I get it. Model what you sell most. Well, Jeff, I do a four foot column with a foil topper. And I do that, you know, that's a regular thing people buy. Great. That's a product. Jeff, I do an eight foot or, you know, column. It's kind of an organic -y thing, but I get, I have people order it. I like, you know, I get a bunch of people who order it. Great. That's a product. I get, a, I have a classic arch built this way. You know, I sell like 25 of those a year. Great, that's a product. You can answer this question. I know you can build anything. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to model the cost of the products you have. And there are things that people buy from your business that are consistent. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, nope, I have never ever had two orders that are the same. I don't take that work. I don't do that work. That's for the other balloon decor people in my room. I only do amazing art and I only do it for customers who are going to give me 10 grand and let me do whatever I want. Yep. You can just hang up now. This is not for you. You are operating a different kind of business. You are not in the quote balloon decor industry. You are in the custom artist experience industry and we could have a different conversation on a different day. So come with me to this idea that your business is actually predictable and it is actually a process and a system because this is an amazing place to be. You can get your balloon decor business to this spot. When you're ready to sell, I want you to call me. I don't know if y'all know, but I buy balloon decor businesses. Now I'm not competing with y'all because I know that opens up a whole thing. But just, you know, if you if you're if you're the artist and you roll in, you only take clients to pay 10 or 20 grand and only something custom and that you they can't tell you what to make and stuff like like I don't want to buy that business. I can't repeat, I can't hire somebody to run that business. Your business is more valuable if you're more predictable. Okay, now there's one other thing I want to talk about here, which is the variable part. These notes on these slides are as much for me as you, can you tell? Um, so, so your variable pricing, the variable pieces. Now, this is not, I mean, it can be how many balloons, but that's not the part that I want to talk about. The part I want to talk about here is like your delivery and your strike and your setup for a mitzvah, which has to be done by a certain hour on a certain day, and then you can't go back in until, right? 
these things that are variable, like substantially vary the cost of a particular job. Not about the product, right? It's about fulfilling the, the positive customer experience. Those should have their own items in your spreadsheet in your cost model workbook as well. So this could be a delivery fee. This could help you figure out how much do I charge for different zones? I'm gonna just take a simple one. Let's say we're here in, in my area and it's like, okay, so if I just have to go four miles, you know, I know that I can predictably do that in a half an hour. <laughs> Welcome to Seattle. And so, you know, I'm just going to say, if you're in within four miles of my location, that the fee for delivery, for just a simple delivery, is this. Okay, well, what goes into that? If you're using a cost model, gas goes into that, labor goes into that. It might be your labor, it might be somebody else's labor. Labor is going into that. Time is going into that, right? So there's a cost of time. There's a cost of, there's a cost of, there's a cost of, right? So these things, I want you to think of them as products. And so Jeff, would that then um, include on that spreadsheet, um, not only like the delivery and the radiuses, but then like time structure so that if it's that after hours or that rush fee, that would all be yeah. a part of that as Yeah, I want products. you to use, I want you to use math. Wherever you think there are one of these things that are distinct, I want you to think about the math. Some people say, you know, so I, I love talking about having to strike late at night or, or, or very early tomorrow because the party got done overnight, right? Right. You or somebody from your team has to be up at night to do that. That is a massive inconvenience. I don't, I mean, unless you're working nights and that's all you, not all that person does for you. I mean, great. You, you've, you've made it. If you've got that person, <laughs> hang in there, Sherry, stick with us. Um, that is a major inconvenience. Your customer may or may not respect that that's a major inconvenience, but you should not care. <laughs> I'll be honest. That is a major inconvenience. Amen. You probably have to give that employee coffee or overtime or I don't know what, right? But to keep that employee happy, and that employee might be you if you are your team, that costs more. And so the cost of that should be more. Sorry, the price of that should be more. It costs more, and so the price of that should be more. Now, that, so I, I'm just dropping it here. I'm going to walk away. I don't know exactly what items you're going to stick in there for variable pricing because your business is different. What I, you know, I'm going to like, I'm going I'm to give you the takeaway. Like, if you want to have know the answer, what's the one thing I should do from this session? If you want to just like be like, great, Jeff gave me the answer. I'm going to drop the mic and peace out. I have stuff to do. What I want you to do is I want you to create one cost model spreadsheet if you don't use cost models. That is the most valuable thing you could possibly do as a result of this session. If you don't have spreadsheets to track it, pick a product. Pick the product you do most often. And create a spreadsheet to help you understand what your expenses are. And, and we'll talk, we're going to talk about strategies here if you want to get into that. But just if, if nothing else, I need you to create a spreadsheet and start getting this good because it will change how you determine pricing if you have spreadsheets for this. Okay. Now, should um, this information be shared with the customer or is this just shared with us? The customer, so you the, may choose to give the customer options based on the prices, right? So if you come to me and you're like, hey, Jeff, so I want, you know, I, here's my business situation. And so I've been, you know, I checked out the balloon suite pricing, pack, you know, the packages and that. And can you help me figure out which one's best for me? Yeah, let's talk about that. I can talk, well, how valuable is this to you? How many customers of this type for you? Like I can help you understand, okay, well, that means the gold package is best for you. Or that means the bronze package is best for you. Might be the same. Well, we could come in and strike that at 1 a.m., the cost to strike that at 1 a.m. will be this much. Or if we're able to come in next day, you know, between eight and two to do that, then the cost is this much. You don't necessarily want to say, if you could move your house half a mile closer, I could charge you half the cost for delivery, right? You don't, you don't necessarily want to reveal the internals and, and make that complicated for your customer. But you certainly want to help them navigate if there's a decision they can make that can impact their customer experience and their price, because that's part of their customer experience. I, definitely, definitely consider bringing that up. You don't have to. They can also just choose not to work with you. So you just have to judge that when you're in sales. If you, and if cool. you want to dig more into that piece, uh, I think, Joy, you've got a video up about the sales Bible. If you were at Summit, you've certainly got a video up about sales Bible. 
there's th this is a concept that I also teach and talk about, which is how do you do sales specifically? You know, writing it down, and that's a great place to capture what works for you and your business and your cu target customers and all that. Excellent question. And one of the questions is coming up is if um, do you have a spreadsheet for them to start with? I knew that question was going to come up, and the answer is no. Here's what you do. On the left column, you list every expense that you have related to that item. So going down the leftmost column, I'm going to use my left hand, um, balloons, uh, labor, go right down the list. Boom, 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 260s, whatever. Boom, 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 boom. Next to that, the price, or the, sorry, the cost. The labor is this much. The balloon expense is this much. The, go right down that list. Now you have your items and your cost for the expenses. Now pricing strategy will take you in a few different directions. So you're going to add some other things under that based on your pricing strategy. If you're using cost first, then you'll be adding a profit margin. If you're using competitive, you'll be going to see what the average price for this is of your competitors. We're going to talk about pricing strategies in a minute. You're going to be sticking that in there. So, so from that point where you have all of the expense associated with the product, your pricing strategy is then what's going to determine what you add on to that to get to your actual retail price. If you if if that visual that if that description doesn't do it for you, just follow up with me and be like, hey Jeff, I really just want an example, and I'll just throw one together for you and send it. Um, and I'll I'll drop my contact information in here again since I just told told you. You are always welcome to call, text, uh, email. Um, I'm not as good on Facebook Messenger. That's the reality. So call, text, email, those will work. Okay, so in the presentation here, there's some Q and you'll notice that I get into Q and A um, on, on, on some of these items. You know, common, these are common questions associated with a cost model spreadsheet. Seems like a lot of work, Jeff. No, it doesn't. It's just, just you're just gonna start with one. It's not a big deal. Just, just go do it. Um, by the time you have your entire business represented, then yes, it could be. It could you could be putting a bunch of hours in it, but it's not. It's not a lot of work. You just go create one. Tabitha dropped a link in here to a pricing strategy article. That link is up here on the page as well. If you just copy that or put an HTTPS in front of that Tabitha on the chat, it'll make it a link. But that's okay. Um, so I do have an article about pricing strategy up on the Balloon Suite blog. This is way deeper than that article. I'll tell you though. Um, there is a there is a download in there is what Tabitha is pointing out um, for pricing strategy. It's not the same as a cost model. Exact. It's not exactly the same as what I just described. Okay, I'm going to move on. There's plenty here we could come back to. Let's talk about pricing strategies. Yes, Robert, great call out on software options. There are software options out there as well. Pricing strategies. So we just talked about the cost model and you said list out, I said list out all your expenses and then it's going to be different based on the pricing strategy you use. Well, these are these are the most common ones right here. Cost plus, competitive, value-based and dynamic. Cost plus, I'll give you the high level. Cost plus is I'm gonna double it, double my, whatever my total expenses are, I'm just gonna double it. I want a 50% profit margin. So I take all my expenses, I put a little line item in there for overhead and you know that's always hard to figure out. And then, um, and then boom, you just times two and that's your retail price. That would be a cost plus example. A competitive example is that you would go shop your competitors and literally make phone calls and get pricing from them. If they knew you were doing it, they would be super annoyed with you. But it happens all the time, right? If you're a grocery store and the other grocery store wants to know what your price is, they just send somebody next door to find out what the price is, right? I mean, like, okay, it, it's the reality of business. This is called competitive analysis. And for pricing, you can use competitive pricing. What does that mean? It means if I'm providing the same product and service that some other business is, I could just use their pricing and set it to their pricing. You could use value-based pricing. Beware when you want to do that because other people's cost is not your own cost. And you Absolutely. could not be causing, covering your cost. 
Absolutely. I personally would not recommend competitive pricing strategy in balloon decor. Uh, reason being, if you compare yourself to the people who are just starting out, they don't understand this stuff, right? They're, you know, because their prices are like nothing, right? They're not making any money. They're not eating. They're not putting food on the table. So you can't compare it to them. But then do you compare it to the top of the line businesses in your market? If you're in a big market, you're probably not delivering that experience. No matter what you think you're doing, you're probably not delivering that experience. So you're probably not able to, so I don't recommend competitive. I don't even I don't even recommend you pay attention to the pricing of your competitors unless you're working to solve a business issue. I think that it's important to be aware, but you're not basing your pricing off of that. If a competitor is charging $10, $15 less, you know, a foot for organic decor, they're not going to be in business long. But it is important to know that you're not $25 more than your competitor per foot. Like it's important to be aware of, but not to base your cost on. So I recommend personally that you pay no attention to your competitor's pricing if you're using a cost model and a pricing strategy. If you're making it up, then you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I mean, I attended, but I, no, I'm not there. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you, you better you better like pay some attention to what your competitors are doing. But if you're doing this, I, I would recommend that as an owner, you just focus on making your customer service the best damn customer experience it could be for your target customer and focus on your own pricing. Because if, if you came to me with a business problem, hey, Jeff, I'm working on this. You know, I haven't raised my prices or changed my prices for three years. And I just kind of am not sh quite sure what to do like that. Like when I say a business issue, that's a business issue. Great. Well, we, you know, we could take a look and we could figure out what makes sense. You know, maybe your business issue is your sales are way down. Hey, what's going on with my business? My sales are way down. I don't know what's up. I, you know, I need ideas. You know, I, need, I need more ideas. I need some strategy on what to do. If you came to me and are like, hey, Jeff, I want to work on this. Yeah, we would certainly look at your pricing. Because if all of a sudden you're twice as much as any other provider, maybe that's contributing to the issue. But maybe it's not your pricing. Maybe it's that your Google reviews are like 2.0 or 3.0, right? So if you have a business issue, yeah, bring your head up, figure out what's going on in your business. But otherwise, if you have a cost model and pricing strategy, focus on your cost model and your pricing strategy. Because what Tabitha said is important. You're not the same as any competitor. You're not providing the same experience. You don't have complete overlap on your target customers, hopefully. Right? You're doing something different. Okay, value-based is the next one I want to hit. This is doing some research to understand what is the perceived value by my customer of the service I'm providing. One of the reasons that we like business customers, and in particular, you know, the customer, the businesses that are in the top 5,000 in the United States as far as revenue, is because the value we offer is different. The problem that we're solving for them is different than the customer who wants one grab-and-go balloon arch. Person who wants one grab and go balloon arch in pink and purple for their nine year old daughter's birthday, that problem is very different than a fulfillment center that is trying to increase retention in their staff and improve performance of their staff. What does performance mean? Reduce error rate, increase time on task. Do you, you hear how different this conversation is I'll, just, just in the last 30 seconds? The problem you're solving is completely different. And so the pricing for those target customers, if you just focused on one target customer, would be completely different. That grab and go balloon arch, it's probably organic. Um, you know, you, sure, you could sell it to the fulfillment center. That's probably not what they want. But if you did sell it to the fulfillment center, the, literally the value of that to them is much higher and generally the value to the random person who's just got a kid's birthday party and they want one. So value-based pricing requires you to, number one, understand your target customer. Not just like, I'll serve anybody. No, 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 no. You got to be like, I am only going to serve businesses with more than $250,000 in revenue, but less than $10 million in revenue. You got to be specific if you want to look at value pricing. 
but then you can under, you could survey potential customers, you could survey your customers, you could pitch new product ideas, and there's notes on this here in the next couple of slides. I mean, you're looking at this later. There's a bunch of ways you could figure out what the value could be that you could price at. Um, and then the fourth one on here is dynamic pricing, meaning you use variables. You're just how many balloons, how many miles? Here's your price. What day of the week is it? How you know? Am I already full that day? Because you, you bet your bacon, if I had a team <clears throat> and that team was full and my best customer called and said, I need something on that day and I'm already full, you bet I'm doing it. It might cost more and it should because it probably means I'm going to subcontract out some other person, some other work that was on our list. I'm literally going to call Patty or I'm going to call Tabitha or I'm going to call Lenore and I'm going to be like, hey, I need you to do a job for me. Can we do a deal on this one? But it's not going to be for my best customer right? I'm doing my best customer, but I now have an inconvenience. This is a dynamic variable. I, my calendar was full. So if you want a full day, you bet I can do it, but it's double the cost. You bet. And, and, and I don't know, you, you're going to decide if that's a variable you care about or not, but do you see kind of how I thought through that? Sure. You bet I would do a job for a million bucks on a day if I, my team was already full. I could do a lot with a million bucks. You just pay that $500,000 deposit and we'll, <laughs> we'll make things happen, right? Now they might not want to pay that. Yeah, okay. But that's the cost to do work with you if your schedule's full. I think that's an awesome point because so many times people don't think about that part and they don't feel um, the confidence to say, hey, it's going to cost more. Yes, I'm going to do it, but it's going to cost more to do it. And from everyone that I know who is quoted that way, it works because people yes. understand there is a rush fee and there is things that happen when you do last minute. Yeah. And you can use, okay, so I, we've talked about four different pricing strategies now. Your strategy is probably going to be a combination of these. So there are certain things that would be dynamic. And then, for example, certain things that are cost plus. I go to cost, personally, I'm a cost plus fan. Different, you know, different products and services are different, you know, and so, and you, and you, your vibe might be different. You might be, no, I'm all value-based. Great. But, you know, in general, if somebody just came to me and said, hey, I'm starting a balloon decor business, you know, what kind of pricing strategy should I use? I would say cost plus, and there's some things in there that are dynamic. Great, there you go. And those dynamic things, maybe they're fees, or maybe they're not. Maybe it's just the cost. Maybe you just present the all up cost. And then you get into the whole sales strategy and how do I talk about pricing thing? And that, that kind of gets into a whole world, right? Do I price my thing at $47 or at 50? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a whole, we're not going into that. There is all sorts of stuff there if you want to go deep there. I, it may, it's probably not worth your time, I'll be honest. You should probably, instead of researching that, you should probably set the price at 50 and then go learn how to get on the phone and sell on the phone. Okay, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of additional information here in the slide about pricing strategies. I'm not, we talked about some of this. I'm not digging into it here. Um, you don't want to just hear me read these. There's a FAQ kind of style slide in here as well. You can come back to this. You can pause the video right here. You can check this out. I want you to just take a moment and read this slide and you're going to have to read it more than once to understand it. And then I'm going to talk about it. So just, I'm going to be quiet. I need you to take. If you can't see this because you're driving or whatever, I'm going to say it twice because you're going to need me to say it twice, twice to understand it. I don't the English, right? If no sales leads, these are humans. If no sales leads push back on price, the price can be higher. If no sales lead pushes back on the price you give them during sales, your price can be higher. Okay, so the first time I heard this, I was like, wow, the only people who ever push back on my prices are people I don't want to work with. I wonder what would happen if I doubled my price. And so the next person who called, my price was double. And guess what? I sold it. I was like, oh my gosh, because we literally made double that we did yesterday from this thing, right? And, and so I was like, well, that was just a fluke. You know, that was a big business, whatever. So the next person who called, I stayed at double. And we had a discussion about the price and then they bought it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a, absolutely, that sounds great. Boom, here's the check. All right, take my money. 
They didn't throw their credit card down on the table and say, take my money. That's amazing. We had a little discussion about it because they wanted to understand the value they were going to get for what I was doing. But I'm at double, right? I was, I'm literally like yesterday, my price was here and I doubled it. And you called me today and the price was double. If you're never getting pushback on price and you want to be in successful in business and you want to be successful as a business owner, you need to raise your dang price until you're sometimes losing customers to price. Like, why wouldn't you? Would you say an 80% closing rate is good? Uh, I don't know. I don't you know, know. Thank you, Joe. When, yes, I hear about, when, I, when I've been in other discussions about raising the prices, you're like, if you, you're doing good, if you got an 80% closing rate. I, I think my opinion off the top of my head, Robert, is that there's no way to say a certain percentage is good. Because in general, I think we're really bad in the balloon decor industry at what would be called qualifying sales leads, which is to determine if they are good customers for us. Basically, if we can convince someone to pay, then they're a good customer for us. But that's not true, right? So I know, I know in for balloon suite, in balloon decor, if you have more than about six or seven rental items, you might not be a good customer for balloon suite. Okay, so so when if we get together, if we're on the phone and we're talking about, hey, I'm I'm checking out this plan, I, I want to know about your business. If you like if you if you didn't just subscribe and you want to talk to me about it, then you're gonna get the expertise of are you a good customer for us? And if and I ask you, what do you do in your business? Oh, we do balloon decor and we do this other thing, we do this other thing. Oh, that all sounds great. And we have a warehouse full of rental items. You know what? I'm gonna be real straight up with you. I don't think balloon suite might not be a fit for you. I'm gonna need you to really think critically about this conversation as we're having it. I want to help you decide because I don't know that we're a good provider for you. Okay, if all the phone calls I get in a week are from companies that have warehouses full of rental items for Balloon Suite, then a 0% close rate might be the right close rate. See, that's so I think that for me, that's why I say, I don't think, I don't think somebody can give you a rule of thumb on a good close rate. Um, I would say that you, if you're doing your own sales or the person or people you have doing your sales, they should feel like occasionally someone declines because of price. You anecdotally talk to them. Jeff? Yeah. Okay. So we don't all have conversations with our clients on the phone. A lot of them know what they want to order. This is our price and this is what they go for. But when you're saying this, if no sales leads push back on price, the price can be higher. So you have, I have three different prices in columns. Okay. Using that as I seem to get everybody want to go for that second price, that second tier price but I'm not selling as much on the higher tier, which mm -hmm. would mean I can push the second tier price up because that's what they're all going for, right? You could try that. But I mean, wouldn't that- Things are getting more complicated in the story though. So what I would say is that there's, there's another thing to understand, which is, could you find out why people are buying the second one instead of the first or the third? Okay, how would I find that out? Well, you could call some past customers and ask. Mm -hmm. Hey, you remember when we were talking about your such and such event and we, I, I talked about those three options? No? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, thanks for being a customer. Yes. You remember when I asked you next person, right? You remember when we talked about those three options? Yeah, I remember that. Um, do you, you know, I, I would, if you could just get, share two minutes of your time with me, I would like to know what about that was the most appealing item to you. If you, because if you understand how they are making that decision, you will really understand what you can do with your pricing. Mr. Fudge just chimed in here. Welcome, Mr. Fudge. Love having this guy in the room. Also very business savvy. And yeah, I, I think I think we'll just I think we'll just leave it there. <laughs> I re you will hear me say consistently. I know y'all feel like you don't want to do business on the phone. You need to do business on the phone. Now, that's not entirely true because you might your target customer might not want to do business with you on the phone. Okay, they might want to use Instagram DMs. So what I said might, might just be BS. But in general, a balloon decor company that is going to grow and have a long life and be financially successful and help your team feed you know, their families and send people to school and all that, you're going to need to do business on the phone because you're going to work with businesses. And there are some businesses, honestly, that just want to do business on the phone. And there are some businesses that just want to do it over email. They don't want to take the time, right? It depends on the person and the role and all that stuff. But 
I want to encourage you to have a phone number available. And particularly, we're getting into something else. But if you have trouble with ghosting, you know, you send a quote and you never hear from them again, your sales process is your problem. And getting on the phone instead of throwing a quote at somebody over email will absolutely make a big difference in your sales closure rate. I tell you, if you send me a quote over email, I'm going to decide based on the email, based on the numbers. You don't have an opportunity to upsell me or downsell me or cross sell me or understand what my problem really was that I wanted solved. But if you get me on the phone, you have the opportunity to understand that and actually solve my problem. Okay. I want to, I want to finish this out real quick because we're going to, Joette's going to start harassing me about time and I want you to be able to ask questions. How to change your prices. Um, I need you to use a process. What is a process? Is it a list? It is a list of steps that are written down that you follow. Ooh, not just written down, but that you follow. I need you to use a process to evaluate your price prices. How do I do that? You need cost models. You need, so that means you need to have a pricing strategy. And then you need to choose when am I doing this? December is a very common time of the year for a balloon decor business to reevaluate its prices. I would say the, the next most often one that I'm aware of from time of year would be like March. It's before graduation season, basically. So to be able to use a process to change your prices, you need a cost model, which means you have a pricing strategy. You don't have to have it for every product. You could literally just do this for one product, right? This is your first time going around. Just, just go for it. You need to choose when you're going to do it each year. And then you do it. You reevaluate your cost model. You don't, you don't have to look at your cost model for 11 months of the year unless something big happened, right? Boom, I do this every December. Okay, so you, in December, you put it on your calendar every December. You come in, you reevaluate that cost model. You update the numbers. You choose your new retail price. You decide when you're rolling that out. And from what that moment when you've decided I roll it out, all new Listen, all new marketing and sales leads should be exposed to the new price. If we have a contract for a price, you best not call me and say, I've decided to change my prices and so now it's going to be this much. I'm going to be pissed. If we're, if I was, you know, if, if we talked today and you decided tomorrow your pricing is different and you gave me a quote today and I contact you to, to sign the deal and pay my deposit tomorrow, and you say, well, actually, I increased my prices and that's now double. I'm going to be pissed. I'm out of here, right? So I want you to think through that communication and like what exactly that cutoff is for how you deal with people who are in your sales pipeline. So the, the sales Bible is bleeding into our conversation a little bit here. Now, if you don't have an agreement with a customer, you can do whatever you want. I'll be honest. Maybe you open up that cost model and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm losing money on every one of these that I sell. Yeah, you better say no to that person who calls you tomorrow to sign because that would be stupid to take that job and lose money. That would be literally stupid. That is how businesses go out of business. So I'm not saying never do that to someone, but I'm saying if you, you, know, you adjust your price like 5%, things have changed. Don't, don't make it harder for your customer to do business with you because you decided to make a change and it impacted them today and you now you're being kind of unreasonable, right? Good discussion in chat. Like I said, Mr. Fudge, always the business savvy can, can roll in here and, and represent this stuff too. Uh, one other thing I would add to the time of year, why March-ish is because it's before people are gonna really get into you to talk about uh, graduation decor. And I know graduation decor is very, typically a very lucrative time of year. And so I think that's why March-ish is kind of the next one. I, I would say that in general, people who change their pricing for graduation season do it too late because you would like that commencement to be on your new pricing as well. But then now we're getting more complicated because if you do graduations and if you have commencement clients as opposed to like home parties for graduations clients, you, you know, you might be signing that deal nine months ahead. So it might just all flush out in the wash. You can choose for your business however you want to do it. Uh, in some cases, it makes sense to do it. If you have a particular target customer that has a really good time of year where they generate a lot of, like you're working with businesses and, um, and they have really good revenue months in a certain part of the year, that's the time to change your prices is right at the beginning of that, right? If you change your prices on a business customer at the moment in the year and you have this consistent, you just do retail and you know every, right? 
every December is going to be pretty good for them. November is going to be pretty good for them because they sell products people buy for gifts. Great. That might be the time to change prices on them. Don't wait until January when they're taking this huge stack of returns. They might not from they might not be as willing to tolerate that. So there's more in here about price changes and actually how to do it. Mm, yeah, I don't think there's anything else here I want to mention. Oh, I want to talk about discounts real quick. Should I give a discount? <laughs> Some of y'all be being like, some of you are like, I discount every single sale I do. What are you talking about? Okay. Um, there may be a good reason to give a business, uh, to give a discount. Absolutely. Right? Maybe they're your best customer and they order all these things every week. And so you give them a deal. Absolutely. Maybe that helps keep that customer where you're in an industry, you're in a market that's competitive and other people could be trying to move in on that customer, right? And so you need to build a little bit of a moat around your business. Sure, this is a business reason to give a discount. Maybe it's another provider. Maybe they do balloon decor and they call you to sub you out when they're full. And so you have a, you have a rate for that. That's another good reason. Don't give a discount for no reason. Just don't. Follow your cost model. Way easier. Now you don't have to train your sales team on how to decide what your amazing brain has determined for discounting as an owner, things like that. It's just, it's just easier. Just don't discount. If you have a business reason, sure, I'm totally down with that, but it needs to be a business reason. The fewer, as you see on here, bottom left corner, reducing the number of exceptions and in pricing increases the value of your business. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? When it comes time to sell a business, if pricing is complicated and hard to figure out and hard for someone else to sell, the value of your business on the market is lower. Because it implies to me that your prices are wrong. If I'm a potential buyer and you don't actually know your target customer. You don't actually know what price they would pay. You're just discounting it until they say yes. That's not, that business is not as strong. Okay. Um, if you are in need, I'll just give a pitch. If you are in need of Google ads management or social, social media management help, uh, this month, 50% off those. You just reach out to me. My contact information is in chat. Um, if you're interested in talking about those, I can tell you about how that works and what we do for you and what the value is for you. That's the only piece of the sales pitch here. Um, we're just popping into Q and A. If you're not plugged in, um, we talk about pricing models and hiring and sales strategy and sales Bibles and all these kinds of things in the balloon suite blogs. You're always, always welcome to get hooked up on that. And, um, I think that's it. So I'm just going to stop sharing and y'all can ask me whatever questions you have. All right, Jeff has given amazing information today. And just for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, lots and lots of content, just to let you know, for December, we'll be helping out through some of our other <laughs> sessions that we're having to break some of these things down together and work on this kind of stuff together. So you're not left on your own to do it. <laughs> we will help you through some of these processes. Um, but guys, what questions do you have for Jeff? Al, any questions today? No, I don't have any questions right now. I'm trying to think. I have a bunch, but I'm trying to think which ones are most important. Gotcha. Start small. Start with a cost model for one product. That's the place to start. That's where mine started. Literally, it was one service that we were selling. I just put one spreadsheet together just for that. Don't eat the elephant all at once. You'll, it'll never work. I mean, don't eat an elephant. Those suckers are awesome animals, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. You, but y'all feel free to drop yeah. questions in chat too. Uh, I have a question. I think Joette might have the answer, though. I think we have a cost model, something or other, in Mastermind, right? Yeah. Don't we have a file. Yeah, we have several different docs that um, other people have shared with us in the past. And what I'll do is I'll highlight them up into the Facebook group. So specifically, I was looking for one that was super granular on the overhead cost. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I have not. I've seen some, like even the Qualitex one is like, how many balloons do you use? Mm -hmm. But uh, no one really covers overhead. And yeah, so I, have I, would... a, I have an overhead sheet. Yep, I'll make sure to get that to you. Rule of, thumb, rule of thumb for overhead, if you're hearing this overhead conversation, overhead are the things that aren't um, order specific, right? Your rent is not order specific. Your taxes are not order specific. I mean, they kind of are, but they're kind of not, right? Um, the, 
the way that basic, basic, easy way to handle that is look at what your monthly overhead is and divide it by the number of orders you expect or the number of that particular item you expect to sell and just give it a share. You know, just, you're just going to mark up for overhead based on I, what you anticipate. And I'll just talk that about a mistake I made because I tried the monthly thing and then I realized that all 100% of my recurring yearly expenses are in January after my busy season is over because that's when I have money to start there. Uh -huh. So unless you're, you know what you're spending and where, you might miss some of those. So if you can do a year and divide it out per month, yeah. Yeah. that's a better way to do that. But yeah. I, I completely if, agree. Yeah. Don't look at a month. Look at a year of your overhead. But and if then, you don't have a year, whatever you have, divide it out. Yeah. It's, it's great. I just want to say that I made that mistake. So, so you don't have to. And you may discover when you all of a sudden include overhead in your calculations that you're losing money. You haven't been considering overhead. And then all of a sudden you consider overhead. You might be like, whoa, that's why I feel like I'm never able to pay myself as much as I want to. And what would that do to your prices once you include overhead? That would probably result in your prices going up. Love it. All right, guys, we have a lot of folks on this afternoon. I appreciate you taking time to be here. So while we still have Jeff on, if you have a question specific to what he asked, talked about today, please feel free to do that now. Because um, if not, then he'll get to be able to go on his merry way and take care of his clients. Tabitha, I see you opened up your mic. The biggest problem I have with doing the cost model is calculating an hourly rate for labor mm -hmm. when I need to look at covering my salary, my event designer, my inventory girl. It's not just who is creating it that mm -hmm. I need to make sure I cover their labor in the pricing. So yeah. I need to have overhead, I need to have cost of product and I need to have labor. And to, to calculate that throws me off a lot. What's an easy I way? would recommend you just add a line item for each of the different types of labor in your cost model. So if you act as the designer, then there's some time for a designer on that item. And your rate, like you mentioned, would be different. Um, so, sorry, I got a dog barking in the background. I don't know if you all hear that. Um, so just break it out. And I, I agree, it's not easy, but break it out. And then whatever, if, if you're paying somebody, uh, you know, $20 an hour, your cost to, to have them is not $20 an hour. No, it's more like 25. Have, right, right. Because of so, taxes. Yeah. Yeah. So bump it up. That's, that's what you should put in. Don't put in their, don't take their pay. You want to put in your expense for them. Now and just break out a line on them. On that so, same note, I, I'm curious if I'm paying someone 20 an hour right now, but I'm looking to pay them 25 or 30. Should I be planning ahead with that higher cost in mind now? Um, your know cost that's... model should not have names. Your cost model should have roles. Okay. Um, so I want to, I, I would set that expectation first. Okay. And then um, the other piece is if you expect next year to be paying a different amount, then when you do your reevaluation of your prices or on whatever schedule that is, if you know that you're making that move, I would make that move in the, in the cost model and it, it would apply. So like if we're doing 2024 pricing, yeah. If you know that your cost of labor for someone in particular is going to change, sure. Put that in your cost model, but do okay. it by role. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So and being an owner and paying yourself. Okay. Stick with me. That's not a role unless you are spending time on that product. You are overhead. Leadership, of, leadership time of your business is overhead. Time spent assembling an item is part of your cost model. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. um, could taking my payroll for a period of time and dividing it, like my payroll was almost 8,000. We earned almost 24,000 and we did about 23 jobs. Could mm -hmm. I mathematically base a, a, a possible mm -hmm. 
Sure. Is there some, there's data there. I just don't know how to quantitate it. So my recommendation is to not get stuck. If, because I think that would be a fine way to start. Grab that, throw that in there as your hourly rate. Go for it. Just don't, don't get stuck at creating your, your first cost model. Get in there and get it written down. And then you'll see, you know, over the course of months or a year, you'll get really good at this and you'll start to get more sophisticated in it. But don't get stuck on any aspect of this at getting going. Thanks. In the chat, I just put in a Canva link that um, goes to a list of overhead. So anybody who's on can click on that and that'll go into your Canva. If you have other questions, I would love to talk about them. They don't have to be about pricing and cost models. They can be about anything related to your business. Um, you can all you can stick me in your mobile phone. Um, give me a call or text anytime. Anytime you're facing a business thing or a sales thing on marketing, obviously my team can help you. But um, I'm happy to dig in and help you solve business problems anytime you've got them. And, and so for, I'll drop that contact information for you one more time. Feel free to stick me in there. Awesome. So anybody who's not used to um, our online Zooms, um, this is a time where you can ask questions. Um, Jeff is an awesome resource. He's been to Summit for years, so and he's been to other balloon events. He works with tons of people, so he understands a lot of the ins and outs about business. So feel free to ask those questions and pick his brain while he's here. Um, and don't be shy about it. And then the other invitation I'm going to do before I turn off the recording is to let you guys know um, if you're interested in hanging out with Jeff and a bunch of other mentors <laughs> at Balloon Boss Summit in Orlando in November, already half of our seats are sold. It's not even a month since our event <laughs> was held and we already have half the seats sold for last year. If you are a mastermind member, you do get a discount. Um, some of the people who are watching today are not mastermind members. So just letting you guys know as you watch this, you can always send me an email, joetta balloon or just go to the website and check out that information if you want to join us and be able to have really cool conversations like this face to face in November of 2024. Um, I know sometimes people are afraid to ask questions while we're recording. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this recording in just one second. But I just want to make sure in the replay, you guys know if you want to be a part of Balloon Boss Mastermind, Balloon Boss Summit, any of that stuff, you can put a 10 minute free call with me on the website, ballooncoach.com. And if you want to get a hold of Jeff, his email is jeff, J E F F, at asset, A S S E T, lab, L A B dot U S. Um, and he is a great resource for you guys. So I want to pause the recording and you all can come listen to us live in the future to be able to interact in these off the record conversations that happen. <laughs>